Thylee Bay can be the source of some of the most awe-inspiring flights of your life, and also some of the most potentially hazardous. This video hopes to enhance the first, and avoid where possible, the second. Thylee itself can be flown when it's too far off to the south at Brid, or when it's too light at Brid, because Thylee takes a suddenly wind and is usually a few mile an hour stronger than in Brid Bay. The takeoff is in the country park towards the brig and can be very difficult due to rotor. It's very much a case of laying your wing out and then walking up and down to find a bit which is rotor free. It's made doubly difficult by the close proximity of parked cars. An alternative takeoff is the cliff to the town side of the park. There's no parked cars here, but the rotor is even worse. You pay your money and you take your choice. The beach at Filey Bay is virtually pure sand, with large areas exposed at low tide, making for some great thermal conditions in spring and summer. The bay has a high tidal range, meaning that there's very little beach left exposed at high tide. This makes it difficult to fly an hour either side of high tide, especially when it's coupled with the difficulty of the top landings. The top takeoff and landing spots suffer really badly with rotor so you should never position yourself any further back than this pilot has. It's tempting to try and land in the empty field behind the parked cars, but even if you've got three or four hundred foot above takeoff and you land four or five hundred metres back, you'll land in some seriously dodgy air. So let's assume the wind's picking up and the tide's racing in. The top landing is just over. Here we go. The knack is to position yourself out over the beach and lose enough height so you position just below the level of the cliff top. Then run diagonally back to the cliff, doing a smooth turn just as you get lifted over the cliff top so you face out to sea and scrub off your speed. It's all a matter of time. If you turn too early, then have to apply brakes to stop yourself heading out to sea again, you'll just go up in the lift. A little bit of juggling is required. You may have to make two or three attempts before you get it right. It might not let me down. <laughs> if the wind is anything but square on, be slow on a fast leg. Use the slow leg to scrub off your height, pulling as little brake as possible. Sometimes just getting into that initial position below the cliff tops is difficult, especially at high tide and increasing winds. In that case you have to head out over the sea to lose height, as this clip demonstrates. really disconcerting though is the distance you need to fly out over the bay before you start losing height even. In this clip it was decided that a top landing would be too tricky so we plumbed for a landing on what was left of the beach.
So we're crack landing and takeoffs. Let's have a look at some of the actual flight. The wind is off to the south, the brig will move. And on a summer's day, even in light winds, as the heat of the beach gets pushed into the corner. In strong winds, the brig is best avoided, as it is a knife back ridge with sea on the other side. In spring, the sea air is like a glass of chilled white wine. You just want to drink it in. As the beach dries out and becomes more thermic, you can explore the lift in front of the town. Pick a line either along the promenade road or even in front of the sea wall and just see how far you can get before you have to turn back. Sometimes with a light southerly breeze, the heat off the beach is blown right round the bay and into the corner past the paddling pool. You may find yourself dragging your feet in the sand as you're round the end of the prom, but I once made nearly a thousand foot round the corner there before heading off up to Speedon. The next clip shows a typical flight along the seafront in light winds. You may end up on the beach, but so what, just do it for the hell of it. Note how little onshore breeze there is. At any point along here I can bail out and just land on the beach if I need to. This is the tricky bit, getting round the paddling pool. In this instance I tried too early, there weren't enough beach exposed, there weren't enough thermal energy. An hour later it would have been different again. But it was great fun all the same, and a good excuse for an ice cream or a bag of chips. If the wind picks up and becomes more square on, then the flight along the prom becomes more doable. The paddling pool then becomes less of a problem. Conditions permit, you then can head up towards Primrose Valley. Having shown you how easy it can be to get across the face of the town, let's look at some of the pitfalls. What happens, for instance, if the wind picks up? Well, the first thing you'll do is push out over the beach, because the lift band will get broader and broader. 
pile in the foreground is positioned nicely. The pilot behind him is just asking for trouble. Following a track like this will lose us the sight and is potentially fatal. Adopting a position like this might make for a good photo, but it's obvious that the wind has picked up and is virtually gay-langing. Look at the pilot in front and the gull behind him. The gull is pointing out to sea, a good indicator of strong winds. If the wind picks up strong, you don't want to be hanging around in front of the town. Either land on the beach or head up towards Primrose Valley, or at least you've got a chance of some top landing. And if you think gay-langing in front of the hotels is worthwhile, just to impress your Facebook friends, then watch this. The rest is too sickening to show. So, if you're lucky to be confronted by a view like this, turn right over the beach, not left in front of the hotels. Keep safe.